John Ryder, we're here in Guadalajara, Mexico, just a couple of days out from the biggest fight of your career. How's this, be, this week been, first and foremost? It's been great. Obviously, we was in Los Angeles last week training in the Churchill Boxing Club. Myself, Tony Sims, Dan Lawrence, Connor Ben was there. We had some great sparring with a, a young pro there, 13-0. Um, it was good. I got the rounds I needed to get in. Um, but since we're arriving in Guadalajara, I felt it seems really odd. I feel more at home. I feel like I'm potentially back in Wembley. Wembley Hilton, Shopper Centre next door. It seems, uh, it seems like familiar surroundings. So I feel good. The air feels better. I think um, the gym in LA was a bit stifling with a blow heater and cold temperature. But Guadalajara feels great. It feels The air's nice. The air's uh, thin, uh, cleaner. But uh, the weather's a bit hotter. So not like London. But um, it's just great to be here. I feel, I feel good. There's friends and family coming in all week. So it's um, nice to see some familiar faces. But yeah, I feel like a, a home from home, really. Yeah, you can say that, and the reception you got from the locals, the Mexicans, seems to be great. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was expecting to be very hostile. Obviously, I spoke to John H. Tracy last week, and he was telling me about the hostilities of when he was here and people trying to grab his hands and squeeze him tight and hurt uh, him and whatnot. But um, it seems a bit different now. It seems a bit more friendly, and uh, I'm obviously glad of that. But um, I'm sure come fight night, it'll be very hostile. Yesterday at the press conference, quite peculiar, some of the stuff that was going on. First and foremost, we had a world record um, presentation on stage for the Canelo brothers. What was going through your mind when that came out? Because I was as confused as anyone. I was, I, well, obviously, all the comparisons being made of me and Canelo, I did think about just jumping up at one point and just standing on the edge of the photo and just getting in with a thumbs up and just for a bit of a tongue-in-cheek moment. But um, I, didn't, I didn't do it, obviously. They made the WBC belt falling apart on the stage and <laughs> tiles coming off, but... Uh, no, it was good. I mean, it was um, long-winded at times and in, in a lot of Spanish, I didn't understand it all, but um, got to embrace these moments. I know you spoke about the Callum Smith night numerous times, but has that acted as a driving force for this fight, knowing that you fell short officially on the scorecards last time around? Has that acted as a, an extra added sort of bit of motivation for this one? Yeah, for sure. I think not, not only for this one, but for just the fights moving forward from then on. Obviously, I had big dreams and aspirations of getting straight back in for a world title fight but then COVID hit and we was locked down for two years um, two fights in two years one in Miami on a Glovkin undercard and then one in Austria in a 40,000 seat at a football stadium with a thousand fans which was strange and very last minute but good to stay active and, and keep busy and then um, 2022 was a dream year back in big fight Danny Jacobs uh, finished the year strong with the Zach Parker fight and, and in a great position of being the number one WBO mandatory for, for the Canelo's titles and then obviously early 2023 getting this fight made and getting out here to announce it and that, that brings us to now so as um, people say like what a year last year was last year was a, probably a career best for me obviously going against Jacobs defeating Zach Parker whereas Canelo had a probably a nightmare year for himself the loss to, the loss to Dimitri Bivol um, the, the third and final fight with Golovkin and then surgery to his wrist so it's all there to be seen what he's got left now. You talk about dreams there. I was going through the Matchroom Archive earlier this morning. Hello, we've been uh, interrupted for a photo, I believe. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> and Lewis, our cameraman, has now been prompted to take this photo. Look at that, man of the people. As John said, he's had a great reception all week from the locals. And... I think he's going to get mobbed by even more people now. Yeah, sorry, he's going through the... It just shows you, John, as we spoke about. <laughs> yeah, I'll bung you that score in a minute. Uh, going through the match from archive earlier on, and there was a lot of old videos. I think, actually, on our YouTube, the second video was ever uploaded was John Ryder. Uh, the first was Darren Barker, and you was talking in this video about a sparring session with Darren Barker, and you copped a massive black eye. I think he was about 4-0 or 5-0 at the time. I mean, back then... You must have had aspirations for this night, and now it's finally here. Oh, for sure. I think I might be like Matchroom's longest serving current fighter. I you are. Yeah, well, that's not bad, is it? Um, yeah, I mean, Turn Pro just before Matchroom made their resurgence into the sport, and Eddie, Eddie coming all guns blazing. So um, yeah, I mean, it's been a, a long journey, um, and I've seen the changes, but it's, it's been it's been good, and it's been good to see Matchroom do what they've done in the sport and pretty much take over. Talk about that journey. Um, you know, you go through your, your resume and look at your, your fights, a couple of real standout moments. You know, I suppose in the, the middle stage of your career, one step forward, one step back. But then the Patrick Nielsen fight in particular, he was brought in as the away side. I think that's fair to say. Nielsen was number one in the WBA at the time. Yeah. It was not on a matchroom show. It was on a World Boxing Super Series. I guess that was a, a bit of a roll of the dice and a not last-ditch attempt, but that was quite crucial in your career. 
Yeah, for sure. I think Nielsen was ranked very highly across the board. I think WBC, WBO and um, WBA, sorry, yeah, he's number one. Um, so for me, it was a fantastic win. Um, Funny enough, I saw saw Mikel Kessler and he was shaking my hand and I congratulated him on it not so long ago. But um, it, yeah, I think it was a real turning point because I feel that like I'd been brought in to, to be defeated and to really boost Patrick Nielsen's career. I think they was... I think that was pretty much keeping him on the on the back burner as a reserve for the, the World Boxing Super Series. Obviously, they had their lineup, but he'd been a bit inactive. So, I uh, uh, that, that 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 win held me in, in great stead. Was there a shift in mindset then as well? Great win, obviously, went on from there to have three or four really big knockout wins on the spin. But was that a shift in mindset from that moment as well? Yeah, I think it was because I went in there expecting to just. Beat Patrick Nielsen on points. I didn't think he'd be able to live with me over 12 rounds. Uh, went from then to uh, Jamie Cox, and I thought the same. He's a, he's a great puncher, but I'll be able to outlast him and survive him. They got him out of there. Uh, Andre Sorokin after that was um, a tricky customer, a Russian. Um, trained for 12 weeks for a South Point. He came out orthodox. Um, so that was a, a bit of a nightmare. But, I mean, he's had great victory since. Um, it was against me that night as well. I cut eye, um, a bad cut eye, and just well, was just not having it my own way. But then eventually got him out there with a body shot, and that led to um, the Vegas fight against Bilal Akwe on the Canelo Jacobs undercard, which was was great to be part of. Um, on this day, on this day, yeah, three years ago. So yeah, well, three, four, four years ago was it? Four years ago. Four years ago. Four years, years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then that brings us to the, the Callum Smith fight, which was. I'm always going to take it to my grave that I feel like I should have won that fight and whatnot. But looking back now, I see it as a blessing because I don't think that would have brought me to now. I think um, my career might have been done by now. I might have had this fight already and just obviously what with COVID and whatnot, things were, things were different then. And I think the fact that I, I didn't get a decision that night really drove me and spurred me on throughout the COVID times to keep fit, to stay ticking over, to stay ready and, and take the opportunities as they come and probably prolong my career. And to the present day, just three days away now from Canelo Alvarez. I know you said previously you, you were a fan of Canelo, you know, you've seen him up close in person as well. You met him in Dallas a couple of years ago. How long has this been in your mind as a reality that this could happen? Well, listen, for, for a long time now, um, since I stepped up to Super Middleweight, I've always thought about this fight uh, obviously he's, he's, a, he's a massive name in the sport and listen make, make nothing about it I've been, I've been fans of Cannon Smith I've been fans of Billy Joe I've been fans of Danny Jacobs over the years and even the likes of um, yeah like Billy Joe going to the Olympics um, Jamie Cox winning the Commonwealth Games gold medal when I've not even had a, an amateur fight yet so I've been fans of these people long before I even see them as rivals so the Danny Jacobs story has been a, been a great story to, to follow and listen this um, a lot of admiration for him as a, as a man as a fighter and as a man even more to, to battle back from the depths he's been to with illness and whatnot. but it's, it's no different with Canelo I've been a fan and uh, Saturday night put it aside and, and, and focus on fighting and how's John Ryder beat Canelo Alvarez I always make a joke about just land more punches than he does or throw more. But um, this, I know, I, I know I'm up against it. I know it's going to be a tough, tough fight. But I know I'm going to have to go to depths that I've never been to before. But I'm willing to do it. And uh, I don't know if he is now. And John, just finally, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning, back home, four o'clock in the morning. If you're going to be tuning in live on the zone, great support on your phone. I was with you earlier on. Your phone was buzzing left, right, and centre. Just a final message back home to the fans watching. Just thank you for supporting. Um, Thank you for getting behind me. Thank you for, for being the driving force as well. Um, I hope to bring these titles back to the UK for, for more big nights. And um, thank you for supporting. John Ryder, thanks for your time. Best of luck Saturday. Thank you.